Two years ago, before the work began, this was a barren wasteland. Nothing had been grown here for 40 years when the UN World Food Program told the villagers that they were going to bring this land back as part of the Great Green Wall. The villagers said it was impossible, but here we are in Africa, in the desert at the northern edge of Senegal, and life has returned. The stakes couldn't be higher because when the soil washes away and land becomes a desert, people leave. They head to the cities, and places like this just fall apart. But thanks to the work of the villagers and the World Food Program, using techniques and systems that I'm going to tell you about in this video, the tides have changed, and natural wealth is growing back, growing the livelihoods of the people here. Welcome to Senegal. I'm here during the rainy season to see the work of the Great Green Wall of Africa. My wife and I started in Dakar, a city of about 4 million people. It's the biggest city in Senegal and is the westernmost point of the entire continent of Africa. I met with the World Food Program there in Dakar to discuss our trip. We then drove with the World Food Program. It was about a 7-hour drive through the Sahel. The ecosystem really changed a lot. In the southern part, the trees were larger, dispersed amongst the millet fields. As we drove north, the trees became smaller and smaller. This is late in the rainy season, this land is as green as it gets right now for the whole year. I've never seen this many grazing animals. The entire Sahel is like one big free-range pasture. We drove up to the point where it transitions to the Sahara Desert, which is the Senegal River. We are here at the Senegal River, which is the border between Senegal and Mauritania on the other side. When you look from space, you can actually see the lateral sand dunes of Mauritania where they hit the Senegal River. The Senegal River is really the divide between the Sahara and the Sahel in many parts of the river. The Senegal River here serves not only as the border between Senegal and Mauritania and as the border between the Sahel and the Sahara, but if this river zone is vegetated, it could represent the first line of defense of the Great Green Wall of Africa. The Great Green Wall of Africa is a vision, a project to plant a barrier of trees across the entire width of the continent of Africa from Senegal to Djibouti. The purpose of this Great Green Wall is to stop the southern expansion of the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert has expanded about 10% in the last 100 years. We have the Sahara Desert, then we have the Sahel, then we have the savanna, and then we have the rainforest. The design is to actually have a barrier of trees to stop the expansion of the desert southward. So, I'm here on the ground at the Great Green Wall to show how we can restore degraded landscapes. We can keep the Sahara at bay, create abundance, and have people living here and thriving. We are here at the WFP project site. We are in a very degraded land area. In the early beginning, when we presented the process and the idea, the community didn't believe it. They said, no, this is not true. This is not feasible. We cannot recover this land. More than 40 years we are here, and nothing is growing on this side. The process started with community-based participatory planning. By the end of this process, it was agreed that one of the major actions in the land reclamation or land recovery project was necessary. This is a sort of school where they come to learn how to improve the land. The people believe, they are convinced, and they are also committed. You can see, at WFP, we have planted and rehabilitated some 300,000 hectares of land over the past years. What you see here is 30 hectares out of those 300,000. This is a contribution to the Great Green Wall because the Great Green Wall is like a patchwork, a mosaic of forests that together create this wall that will protect the Sahel from being encroached upon by the Sahara Desert. We are working on degraded land and bringing it back to life, and that takes a few stages. When we start with soil like this one that we see right here, okay, that is crusted, sunbaked, and cannot support any kind of life because it is literally hard as cement, there's no way seed or any plants can actually take root here. We bring it back to life and bring it back to production so that it can feed people and feed the communities, and communities can start thriving again. We need to create water harvesting structures that maintain the water on site. If we look at the soil the way it is right now, the water cannot stay here, so it drains and flows away. These half moons are the first step in this rehabilitation process, in this soil buildup process. On this side here, we have 7,500 half moons, each of which has a 4 meter diameter. It takes one person to dig one half moon per day. This site has been dug by a team of 150 people. So, how does the half moon work? 
The rain basically comes here, and we have put the half moons on contour lines, which means the rain, when it falls to the ground, flows into this area here, which is a little bit lower so that it retains the water. We create this embankment, okay, that's a little bit higher up to make sure that the water doesn't overflow, okay, and it stays here and feeds these plants. We are mainly using local species like sorghum and millet that have been domesticated here many thousands of years ago. They actually come from the Sahel and produce a maximum quantity of biomass as well, so they are perfect to rehabilitate the land while feeding the people at the same time. This is nothing new, we have not invented a technology here. The half moon technology is actually an endogenous technology to the Sahel and has been forgotten over time. We have rescued it from the past. The sorghum that you can see behind us actually grew only with rainwater. Around 10 to 15 percent of water that will be caught here will enter the ground and will recharge the groundwater tables. That way, we actually achieve a balance of water, so we are not depleting the water resources, but we're making sure that we keep enough water in the ground for future generations. Then we have another system that mainly consists of planting lines. We have horticulture beds where we can plant tomatoes, okra, and so on. Here we have trenches where we have planted moringa, we have planted pigeon pea, and we have planted some okra that has grown wildly here. The idea here is that we have biomass trenches that will provide biomass as the system grows. In between these trenches, we have planting pits where we have planted fruit trees like guava and citrus. This is just the very first step in this pilot. We'll also be using other native species that we will be planting in the pits that will drive the rejuvenation of the soil and the protection of the soil as the system starts growing into abundance and producing food and life for the people here. In its mature state, this system will look like a forest, okay, forest lines that will be producing biomass and fruit, and we'll have other lines in between where we'll be producing horticulture vegetables. This is exactly the way nature works. We came across a system called Copic Farming, which is a type of conservation agriculture that has been developed in Brazil based on global indigenous knowledge. In the whole world, many indigenous populations have a similar way traditionally to do agriculture that is different from conventional agriculture and which mimics forest dynamics. In the next step, we'll be growing trees here. If we look at the vastness of this area here, we can plant tens of thousands of trees into these structures. Sometimes you come into the villages, and you don't see anybody. You can just see some animals and say, okay, I think people are here. Usually, every year after the rainy season, most of the young people migrate to Dakar and other big towns in Senegal. This is the internal or local migration. Some leave Senegal to go to Spain. What do they go there to do? Agriculture, the very same agriculture that they leave behind. They go to harvest apples there, while they leave the same activity here. Before, they were thinking about how to migrate, but they tell me now they don't think about that. With this garden we put in place now, we are going to work 12 months on vegetable production. Now these young boys, who are very key for the village security and for the village development, don't need to go and leave just old people in the village. Now they will contribute to the local dynamic of the community. Now they are together, they have social cohesion, this project was really, really interesting because the World Food Program wanted to demonstrate how you could take the most devastated areas and turn them back into resilient, food-producing locations. They specifically placed their project on a very degraded landscape that had been taken down to bare, compacted earth. This is actually the front line of the Great Green Wall of Africa. The Senegal River, at least for this region, is where you're going to have your real true dividing line between the Sahara and the Sahel. The work of the WFP is solving this problem directly here on the ground with the Great Green Wall of Africa, 